I'm Mrs. Dean. Mr. Dean right here. And we want to invite you into our home. Come. Come into the za za za. <laughs> <laughs> Already right off the bat, you could tell that they're really into each other's sense of humor. Like, what kind of marriage that has been together for a while is still laughing like Alicia has with Swizz right there? I don't see it that often. Good start. Actually, I want to see how long they've been together. When did they get married? Let's see here, sir. Wow, they actually met when they were teenagers. And he got married to Alicia. Whoa, 11. See, they've been married for a while. And for Alicia to still think Swizz is that funny after 11 years of marriage, that's magic shit right there. So I have a feeling this is going to be just an exemplary relationship. You can drool on them because <laughs> the amount of drool that I'm wiping up. It's kind of disrespectful, Aww. but we love you, Samba. I oh, know. He's a big dog. He can't help it. He's a big it. guy. Okay, off to the family room we go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. They're still cracking up, dude, after 11 years. I'm just loving it. They're still playful with each other. I mean, is this happening with all marriages? I don't think so. And then Miss Jordan Castile is so special. I just love how she's sitting in this room with us. Like, yes. It's like everybody's in the room with us. It's also thought provoking. And I think we love to do that with the art. Yes. You could tell that they also share similar tastes in art. Their personalities don't just match up with their sense of humor, but also their interests. This is so, so fucking important. People don't think about this stuff. When they go on dates, they're just going, oh, how attractive was I? How attractive were they? Did they wear nice clothes or something like that? You know, when I'm meeting people, I wanna know, do they relate to me? Do they share my interests? These two are obviously focused on the aesthetics, on art, on creative expression. And that makes sense. They're both professional, extremely successful musicians. The kids' rooms are up here. It's action-packed over here. Action-packed. Radcliffe Bailey. I love Radcliffe Bailey. I just something about this that's so, especially with the music notes behind it. I love how there's like, the, the work inside. Like, do you see how they both care about the art? It's not like, oh, this is stuff that like Alicia likes. Oh, this is stuff that Swizz likes. And that's fine for a relationship. But when you get a relationship that is so connected, you don't have to like all of the same stuff, but just have an interest in the same places. That's beautiful. Like they could talk about art. They could talk about music. They could talk about design for hours. This is what makes a long lasting relationship. It's one one where there's a friendship, a best friendship involved as well. Best friendship. Yes, there it is. Concert. <laughs> that was good. Thanks. Now I'd love to know the story of how they met because it's like, it's almost like everybody is meeting on online dating these days. And it's so much more difficult, I believe, to meet people through online dating. And listen, the relationship that I'm in right now, I met my girlfriend on Tinder, but it's so much just more annoying, frustrating than meeting people in real life. That's why I created a free online dating class that you can get in the link in the description needs. It's 25 minutes long. It teaches you the one change you need to make to your online dating approach that will guarantee you only end up with people that you're attracted to on your first dates. No more of these catfish mother frickers. Anyway, let's get back to Swizz and Alicia. You know, we're coming up on our 11th anniversary. 11 years and we're like, what? The universe just kept like bringing us back together in different ways that's super unexplainable to this day. Like Definitely. at least 10 to 15 events that you just can't ignore. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's such an important thing. Now, this doesn't always have to happen with everybody. When there's something that just keeps bringing two people together, I think there's meaning behind it. I really do. I think that means that these two truly have interests, are truly in circles, which means that they relate with people in similar ways that they connect on, right? If you keep finding the same person in a place, listen, that doesn't mean you're like, oh, I hate this fucking person. Why do I 
I see them all over. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like if you keep seeing somebody, you ain't always enjoying it. That means something. Look out for that. That's why I'm always saying look for people in like minded groups. This is something that nobody's doing. They're just going to the fucking club across the street because there's hot, cool, socially attractive, beautiful people there. Has no relation to who you are as a person, as an individual. You're just going there because it's like, well, there's a lot of good looking people there, right? And I want to be one of them that hopefully somebody notices me and that I get with somebody that doesn't. Instead of focusing on that, I want you to focus on the small stuff. Where are those small events or meetup groups or communities or social circles where there's people that I actually relate to? When I'm hanging out with those people, I feel at home. I could talk to those people for hours and hours. I never am in my head thinking about what to say. I'm never anxious because I relate to the topics that these people are talking about, the personalities that these people have, the sense of humor that these people have is just so similar to mine. It just feels so good. It just feels so relaxing. It just feels so comfortable. And like I said, at home, this is how these two likely got together because they're in the same circles. They are the types of people where they just have that intuition, where they know where to go. They don't care about going where they can impress people or where they could find people that they're impressed by. They just want to go where they relate to people, where they could have those conversations that never end, where they could share art with each other. This is what I think Swizz is saying. I found my equal. That's when all the pieces that felt like they were missing and all the parts that felt like they just didn't quite fit, boom, it all just came together. And I can see that. That's what I saw in the AD video. This is what I'm seeing here. I'm telling you, these guys, I'm sure have a perfect, just beautiful relationship. I'll bet you these two hardly even ever argue, if ever. Her girlfriend was in my class and she used to always rap. And then one day I came outside and she's like, yo, this is Swiss BJ. And I tried to get her number. She never gave me a number though, but um, came back strong. <laughs> <laughs> Came back strong like a hundred years later. <laughs> when I first met him, it was like five chains on, all diamond outfits. I didn't think we had anything in common. But I think that when we started to actually get to know each other, that's when I realized that a lot of things that I thought about him was not who he actually was. And so when I started to actually uncover what he was about, that's when I started to realize, like, wow. Ladies and gentlemen. That's why it's so important when you are on a first date with somebody, get deep, get deep as quick as you can. And I don't mean like so many people when they hear the word deep that they think it means like, oh, I have to like talk about like the bad stuff in my life that happened where my grandma died and she was my best friend. No, let's take away the word deep and make it wide. I want you to cover a wide breadth of things and get extensive about them. Explain yourself, dig for that person. When they say, oh, I like this. Why do you like that? How did you get into that? When they explain themselves a little bit more, dig even more. Oh yeah, you said you like this, but I noticed when you said that, you blah, blah, blah. What did you mean by that? Get further, get further. This is the best way to see if you really connect with somebody. Because when you dig and then you get really specific about expressing yourself, it allows two people to see if they have a real connection or just a superficial connection. Oh, I like the movie um, Napoleon Dynamite. You do too? Oh my God, hell yeah, <laughs> bound it. Not that that's how you would act. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would act like that on a first date. Get into the specifics of why you guys like something, why you don't like something. That enables two people to see if they truly connect. If I could play the piano like my wife, they asked him to be in serious trouble out there. <laughs> they have problems with me just off of analog, like machines. Like imagine I could play what I'm feeling or play what I think mm. and have that. Oh, it'll be, it'll be superhero. It sounds like Swizz is a really intuitive person. Like the fact that he says he could write songs in 10 minutes. The fact that he says like, if I just knew how to play piano and use what I know, like that intuitive vibe that I know I could kill it. That's really interesting because Alicia seems more like the extroverted type. She seems more like the type of person that goes into herself. How am I feeling about this song? What do I want to express? And that's why she was like, who says that, right? Because for music for her, it's a very introverted, 
introverted process. Now, again, this shows that you don't need to be the same person. That's not what I'm saying here. You just have to relate on similar things. You're allowed to experience things in different ways, as long as you appreciate them and see the value in that person. But you never do until you dig until you really get to see their perspective. So many times people just stop at, oh, I write a song in 10 minutes. And then they go, wait, what? Oh, I write a story in 10 minutes. Oh, I finished a test in 10 minutes. What? No, learn why, dig, get to know the person. That's what I mean by deep. I think 11 year anniversary is bigger than a 10, right? Because it's parallel lines, right? The 11 is like a parallel line. And we graduated the, the parallel line of life with each other. I love being married to you. The best shit I ever did in my life. I really love being married to you. <laughs> You could tell how authentic that is when he responded. He was like, me too. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> so honest about it, which is so fucking adorable. Damn, these people are cute. Damn, I love their relationship. Like once again, I just need to stop. Like this is what happens after people are married for like two years, right? Like, oh, I'm living so much. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like this is 11 years, dude. That means something. So what I'm saying is like study them, see what they're doing, study how they met, like learn from this video what I'm talking about here. Take it seriously because you can be in a relationship just like them. I think like a lot of times, People think they own each other because of a ring. She's her own boss, I'm my own boss. Like, we don't own each other. We're not competitive. You know, we, we, we just have two whole different lanes. Like, we're not even trying to occupy the same lane. So, so, so important. God, these guys are spitting such good stuff. One, we don't own each other. This means that they acknowledge that they're both independents that are sharing a relationship together. This is the true meaning of partners. They are partners. Two, they're not competitive. They see they both have individual lanes that they're going for, and they both are pushing each other forward. They're supporting each other without competitive. You know, I've had clients where they go, well, you know, I don't wanna be in a relationship with somebody that makes more money than me. You know, a lot of guys say that. They go, I don't wanna be in a relationship. I wanna feel like I'm the breadwinner. I mean, that's fine, but that's an insecurity. And that's not a partnership. That is a dynamic where you need to feel like the dominant one, where you need to feel like your partner is submissive to you. That just makes relationships harder. When you could swallow your pride, take off the ego, and see the person for who they are. That's true love, that's a true relationship. We have a good sense of like space. And it's not space where suddenly I feel like jealous or he feels as if I'm not paying him attention. I love that we match each other like that. Two independent people in a partnership. This is the thing that I like about the two of you together because it does feel that you are each other's cheerleaders. But is there ever healthy competition between the two of you? Uh, you know, I, I would say no, because mm. I feel that one of the things that really works about us is we're very different. Even the style of music is different from my style of music. We complement each other mm. as opposed to kind of ever in each other's way or should they ever feel We're thinking, well, gosh, she did that, now I have to do this. Mm. We don't rock so, like that. Yeah, that's, we a, know. Un, that's an unhealthy vibe for any couple. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of men are scared of powerful women, mm. right? And so. Mm. I know she's powerful. Her what? power doesn't scare you. No. Mm. Exactly. God. And it's coming from somebody like him, too. To hear that is big. Because once again, all of the fucking alpha male boys so want to be alpha boys. It's literally just fucking insecurity. That's all it is. What kind of confident person needs to bring to the world that he's stronger, more powerful, better, higher value than others? What kind of confidence is that? That you need to validate that in the the world in order to feel it. Does that sound right to you? This is exactly what Swizz is saying right here. And that reminds me, I go so deep into this stuff on my
my new podcast that live streams every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube on my new channel. It's called Betas, baby. That's right, Betas, mother fricker. You can click the link in the description to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell with all notifications as well so you get notified when I actually go live because it's so much more fun to be live with me. You can interact with me in the chat. I bring people up on Zoom to ask me questions and then I put people on something interesting called a mock dates. I take my subscribers, the people that are in the chat at the moment, and I put them on actual dates with each other. They're not real, they're fake dates, but you get to practice what it's like to actually be on a date with a social coach in the room, giving you pointers throughout the way. Also in betas, I bring in my creator friends, interview them, coach them as well on things like social skills, confidence, happiness, relationships. Guys, this is a new channel that I'm so excited about, building this community with you, engaging with you. You know, when I make these videos, it's great, but I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to a camera right now. And that doesn't feel as amazing as when I'm in a room on the internet, actually knowing that you guys are watching, that you guys are typing back to me, that I'm bringing you guys up and chatting with you on Zoom. That is so, so fun. So click in the link in the description to subscribe to my new Betas podcast channel. Make sure you do all notifications once again, so you get notified when I go live. Man, these guys, oh, I hope you come back. I hope you save this video and watch it over and over again. Swizz and Alicia have the exemplary partnership and I wanna call it a partnership and you could tell that's what it is. Lastly, you can click the link in the description now for the free online dating class. It teaches you the one change you need to make to your online dating approach that gives you only dates that you're attracted to, baby. If you click it, I'll be on the other side ready to teach you. Bye-bye.